To get regular updates, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon. Hello friends, I'm Dipali Shah from Exam Bell. In this lesson, we are going to see about the transportation in India. Before getting started, do not forget to subscribe to our channel to get the regular updates. So, let's get started. Transportation An efficient transport system is a prerequisite for a sustained economic development. It is not only the key to the infrastructural input for the growth process, but also plays a significant role in promoting national integration, which is particularly important in a large country like India. The transport system also plays an important role of promoting the development of the backward regions and integrating them with the mainstream economy by opening them to the trade and investment. India has a well-developed transport network. Road Transport Road transport falls under the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. Nitin Katkari is the current Minister of the Road Transport who assumed the office on 26 May 2014. The agencies that fall under this transport are National Highway Authority of India, which is also known as NHAI, National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited, and Indian Roads Construction Corporation IRCC. India has an extensive system of roads that play a vital role as far as the national economic growth of the country is concerned. India holds world's second largest road network. Benefits of Road Transport It plays a very important role in the transportation of goods and passengers for short and medium distances. It establishes easy contact between farms, fields, factories and market, thus leading to the better linkage between consumer and producer. It is a relatively cheaper mode of transport as compared to the other modes and is flexible. The roads can be classified into the three major sections based on their connectivity such as national highways, state highways and district roads. Railway Transport The railway transport falls under the Ministry of Railways. Piyush Goel is the current railway minister and he assumed office on 3rd September 2017. The Indian Railway System is the second largest system in the world under the single management. Railways virtually form the lifeline of the country, catering to its need for large-scale movement of traffic, both freight and passenger, thereby contributing to the economic growth as well as promoting the national integration. It is a multi-gauge system operating on three gauges, namely the broad, the meter and the narrow. Effect on Indian Economy the construction and expansion of the railways have been proved to be beneficial for the economic and inclusive growth of the company. It has played a significant role in the development of cotton textile industry, jute industry, as it provides free flow of raw materials with proper penetration to market areas. Railways have been very helpful in the development of the Indian agriculture. Now, the farmers can send their agricultural goods to distant places and can fetch good incomes. Railways are playing significant role in running country's administration and safeguarding its freedom and integrity as it provides easy movement of police, troops, defense equipments, etc. Problems and issues in the railway Cleanliness, punctuality of services, safety, quality of terminals, capacity of trains, quality of food, security of passengers and ease of booking tickets are issues that need the urgent attention. The high-density networks of the Indian railways are facing acute capacity constraints coupled with a low passenger fares, thereby leading to the increase in freight tariff to cross-subsidize passenger revenues. Investments in safety have also suffered on account of low internal generation of resources. Water Transport It falls under the Ministry of Shipping. Nitin Gadkari, who is the Minister of Transport, is currently responsible for the water transport. He assumed the office on 26 May 2014. Pon Radha Krishnan, who is the Minister of State for Shipping, also assumed office on 9 November 2014. Mansuk L. Manhuya, who is the Minister of State for Shipping, assumed office on 3rd April 2018. Waterways provide the cheapest means for transportation of commodities in bulk because there is no fixed cost associated with them. Costly construction of route is not required. Inland water
waterways. India has about 14,500 km of navigable waterways which comprise of rivers, canals, backwaters, creeks, etc. However, there are a number of constraints attached to the river transport. Namely, the rivers must have enough water flowing in them throughout the year. The river must be free from waterfall and have the stabilized forces. The rivers must flow in the right direction, that is, the direction of the dominant trade flows. Sea ports in India The coastline of India is dotted with 12 major ports and about 200 non-major ports. Issues in sea transport Equipment utilization is very poor due to the equipment being obsolete and poorly maintained. Documentary procedures relating to the cargo handling such as customs clearance requirements are unduly complicated and time consuming. Electronic document processing is yet to be introduced in all the ports. Port access facilities and arrangements for moving inbound and outbound cargo are inadequate and unsatisfactory. Air Transport It falls under the Ministry of Civil Aviation and Suresh Prabhu is the current minister. He assumed office in 12th March 2018. Directorate General of Civil Aviation DGCA falls under the Ministry of Civil Aviation. Aviation as an infrastructure segment has played vital role in facilitating the growth of business and economy in India. A robust civil aviation setup is key to the seamless flow of investment, trade and tourism with significant multiplier effects through the economy. Threats and problems faced by the airways A terrorist attack anywhere in the world can negatively impact air travel. Government intervention can lead to the new costly rules. Airways involve high operational costs, service tax and other charges. Shortage of maintenance facilities high foreign exchange rate, lack of qualified pilot and technical manpower. These are the few threats that are faced by the airways. With this, we have come to the end of this session. Thank you for watching till the end. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel to get